Hello, hello, it's Samara and I have a new layout for you. So I'm going to be using a couple of different um, products from Fancy Pants. So I have Cozy Christmas, Cottage Christmas, and oh, that's it. And so I cut the green, red, and black strips to two inches across, and then I ended up cutting the wood, mm, I can't quite remember. I was inspired by a wood tray that I saw that had like four different planks of wood going across. And um, so that's an, what I ended up doing here. I originally wanted my wood grain paper to go um, horizontally, but the problem was is I realized I needed it to be I needed it to be a greater width. So um, I had to do it vertically. Totally fine. Totally fine. Love the results. My picture is approximately like maybe like four by five. It's so funny. Now that I um, print from home, I rarely print my photos to be standard four by six. It's just kind of funny that way. So my son and daughter-in-law took my grandson out to the snow this weekend and took some pictures and he was trying to escape and so they both had to put two hands each on him to grab him before he before he tumbled you know wherever they were and I absolutely love the little grin on his face it is just too funny so I went ahead and and tore off just one side just the right side of each of those papers and I have plans to kind of ruffle those up a little bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is on all four sheets, I'm just going to distress the edges using the Ranger distress tool. And I didn't film all four of that because, you know, hello, that was a little excessive. But um, I did do all four papers and it made for quite the pile of paper dust, let me tell you. I'm still, I'm still trying to clean it off the layout. So I have my papers here and I'm just trying to figure out how I want them. And for this particular layout, I did something a little bit differently. Um, normally I would start adhering everything down right away, but this case I didn't. So there I stamped out a bunch of images using, let's see, I've got Vicki Booten Fernwood, and I've got Prima Marketing Watercolor Floral and Maggie Holmes Willow Lane. And so I stamped out a bunch of flowers and leaves, and then I watercolored them using my Schmincke watercolors. And um, I tried to go for tones that would match the papers, maybe not exactly, but, you know, enough. Um, and then some of the leaves I stamped out using rustic wilderness and pine needles in the distress oxides. So anyway, I stamped those out on basil marshmallow cardstock, and then I just ran them, ran them through my brother's scan and cut, and it makes for really easy work. The only ones that really didn't cut were the brown leaves at the bottom, and those are stamped in vintage photo. And so I ended up deselecting those before I cut and I had to cut those by hand, but the rest of it, it was super easy work. Let me tell you. So as you can see, I'm just going to hand cut out a couple of these larger sprigs and I elected to go for the brown for the vintage photo on these because I thought that it would add just to that like worn, distressed fall slash winter feel for the layout. And even though you're seeing this sped up, I do have to tell you, it didn't take too long for me to cut up, cut those out. I wasn't super particular. And you'll notice at this time that really nothing is glued down. So I tend to do this where I um, so to speak, audition pieces down on my layout before I make my final commitment. So I'm just going to put together my clusters 
somewhat loosely and then I will, um, well, you'll see, I'm going to wipe everything off the page and finish up the background and then go from there. And here I have the box of the cozy Christmas ephemera and then I also have in there some of the um, pretty little studio glitter and ice collection I think that one was from last year maybe even the year before and so the winter and the um the tag those come from that collection I love that little sled um it's too bad I had already had my heart set on the design of my layout because I really I really do like that sled and I had I had some decent plans for it. The Baby It's Cold outside also comes from the Glitter and Ice collection. And I'll be sure to link everything down below so that you can see exactly what I used so that there is no confusion. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and build this cluster off to the right. And um, I have my main cluster in the lower left-hand corner, and then I have a smaller cluster to the right. And I took the red really from the inspiration in my daughter-in-law's dress. And um, I ended up using two or three different colors of green for the, for the leaves. And it just adds for, for just a nice natural touch to the layout. And here we go, fussy cutting out those little sprigs again. For the life of me, I just can't seem to get those to, to um, cut on my brother's scan and cut. It's really not too much of a problem, and I really don't spend too much time worrying about it, but um, it would be nice if they would cut. All right, and then I'm going to add more, just one teeny tiny cluster up at the top underneath that that little um, round element. All right, so I like the way that this looks, and then I'm going to sweep it all off because that's how I work. If you've ever seen any of my lives before, you'll you'll know this is this is just how I work. So I do put my photo down on that main paper and then now I'm going to position my papers down where I think I want them to go and I'm going to trim off that red one just a little bit and the next thing I'm going to do is just add pencil lines, uh, very light pencil lines to give me an idea of, of where my papers are going to sit. And in my background, I was originally going to go with a vintage photo, but I realized it was going to be too dark. So I brushed in, give me a second, I brushed in some frayed burlap just under the papers. So it's just kind of peeking out from the papers again, adding to that rustic feel. And you'll notice I, I keep like moving the papers over a little bit and that's so that my pencil lines will ultimately end up under my design and not, um, you won't be able to view them from the finished layout. So when I do brush these edges, I do start the color in the center where it will be hidden because I want the color to be really faded and going out. I don't want it to be really concentrated. So I'm just very loosely adding in this frayed burlap color just really brushing it in here and then so far that's good and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just stamp off some of that frayed burlap color on a please piece of acetate and I am going to splatter some of those um, some of that down onto the background and I typically will splatter at the end but in this case I wanted it to be underneath all of the elements all right so I'm going to wipe that off and now I'm going to add in this is the distress oxide candied apple 
And I went back and forth on this color between fired brick and candied apple. And I decided I wanted um, the candy apple. It was just a little bit lighter. I always get nervous when I splatter red, <laughs> red paint because it ends up looking like, well, like blood, quite frankly. So I'm going to loosely put in um, this middle paper, the wide one with the picture, and then I'm going to carefully put in the rest of my papers. So lining them up using my little T-square to make sure that the paper is lined up um, squarely. And I end up, you know, deviating slightly, slightly different than what I had um, previously imagined. And that's okay. Um, typically, I'll take a picture of that so that I can get it closer to what I had previously done. But in this case, I was filming on my phone, so I couldn't snap the photo. I'm going through and curling up the torn edge and then just very carefully lifting the the rest of the papers on all their edges i love the white torn edges it just adds so much character to the layout and i love the little pops of color that are peeking out from um, from the edges there again just it just adds a little bit so I have my trusty fine red top fine line glue here and then I have my foam adhesive and I generally don't like to stack more than one piece of foam. So my trick is, is I just put the foam on the very outer edge of, of the element and I leave the inner edge like where it's tucking under the photo. That's actually flat, but you would never guess it from the final product. So again, I'm just rebuilding those clusters and I'm tearing, cutting some of those flowers in half so that I'm not, you know, wasting a whole flower when it peeks underneath the, the layout there. One thing I love about, about the needle nose glue is that you can really get in to, um, to those little small areas under the photos without disturbing too much. I'm also generally putting the glue just in the very um, inner part of the element. And that's because I want the outer part of it to lift up a little bit. So by only putting it on the inner part, it gives the outer part room to sort of lift up. So again, you can really see the various colors of green that I used here. And I love those brown elements. Oh, I totally forgot about the tags. So I had to quickly go in and move that leaf so that I could get um, the tag. And I love upside down tags. It might be my favorite element ever. So just adding more of those leaves. And I think I said that I stamped the leaves in... The ones that are stamped, I stamped them in Rustic Wilderness as well as Pine Needles. And then um, the ones that are colored in are colored in with the Schmieke watercolor paints. I totally dropped a big glob of glue in the middle of the picture and I was like, well, to heck with it. It's just, it is what it is. This glue does dry clear, so have no fear. I know that I dropped some of it on the paper there, but it will be okay. This is probably my favorite part of a layout is balancing these clusters and, you know, just really using them to make the photo stand out. So 
So this one I struggled with a little bit because it is covering part of my son's shirt, but I just kind of had to go with it for, you know, for the sake of art. That little spatula I just used is my favorite tool in my, in my craft room. I use it to lift up things all the time. It just is so handy. You can see that this is a little bit quicker, this go around, because I already had the design in mind. So even though I did have to recreate it, the basic principles of the design were already planned out. And you'll notice that when I had tossed everything off of my layout, I went up to the side into the sides. And so I already knew um, which pieces were going to be used in which section of the layout. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is splatter some, some more of the frayed burlap. And I want some of this on top of the papers and on top of the elements, uh, the ephemera there, the floral ephemera. So I'm just, you know, not so carefully splattering this, this paint down. And I always have a jar of clean water and dirty water under, um, in a tray under my desk. And so I clean off my brush and then I'm going to go in with, this is a watered down gesso. I think I might've used actually too much water. And in this case, I'm just going in pretty heavily and really splattering this paint. I want it all over. And I want it really on top of all of those floral ephemeras so that it's almost like snow on them. So I love this. When I took that paper off, I actually gasped. I was so excited on how this came out. Finally, I'm going to be going in with this stickers um, alphabet and I want to say that it went with I can't remember which collection it went with last year but or maybe two years ago but I absolutely love it it's called um, comfort and it's a thickers from American crafts and I changed my mind on the title and I end up going with love you which I thought was just perfect All right, so here you can see the final layout. And then coming up, we have some detail shots. So thank you so much for watching. I sure hope that you enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and all that good stuff. And you can check me out over on Instagram. And my name over there is Painty Unicorn. I'll see you around.